Overwatch. It's probably my favorite game from the past couple of years. Everything in it has an amazing amount of polish. In this video, I want to talk about sound design, particularly Zenyatta's voice effect. Take a listen. Here's my version first, what I'll show you how to make. Experience tranquility. And here's the original for comparison. I dreamt I was a butterfly. It certainly has a metallic feel to it, as well as an interesting, unsettling electronic tone. Very fitting for a robot warrior monk. How did the sound designers at Blizzard achieve this awesome voice effect? After reverse engineering it, I discovered there's really just two effects that you need to get it pretty darn close to what Blizzard did. It isn't going to be perfect because I don't have the magnificent voice of Theodore Chin. Experience tranquility. Say what? I'll be using GarageBand, but the tools are basically Logic Pro tools. If you have a new Mac, you should be able to follow along. If you're on Windows, you may need to buy some kind of professional audio software. Let's begin. First, you'll need to create a new blank GarageBand project. GarageBand will ask you to create a new track. You'll want to make sure you have mono input selected rather than stereo. This is important for one of the effects we'll be using later. There are two effects you need. The first is called Chorus. The Chorus effect creates a copy of the signal and adds it to the original signal, but the copy is delayed by an oscillating amount. A disciplined mind is your most valuable ally. The rate is the LFO, or Low Frequency Oscillator. It's what you tweak to change how fast the delay changes. 1 Hz is 1 cycle per second. So the higher the number, the faster the two signals go in and out of phase with one another. The intensity is just the magnitude of the delay. The second effect is called Ring Shifter. This effect combines two well-known effects, ring modulation and frequency shifting. The reason they're combined is because they're mathematically similar. Ring modulation takes a signal and multiplies it by a carrier signal, which effectively splits the signal into two copies, one shifted up in frequency and the other shifted down in frequency. Here's a video explaining ring modulation a little more in depth. What we're interested in, though, is only shifting our signal down in frequency, not up. Now what do I mean by a frequency shift? Well, if you take a signal and speed it up, say double its speed, all the frequencies are doubled. Experience tranquility. This is frequency multiplication, changing the pitch by multiplying it by some number. This is not what I mean by a frequency shift. What I'm talking about is adding a number to all the frequencies in the signal, effectively shifting them in the frequency domain. Okay, I think I've lost some of you. Go search up frequency domain and signal processing, and hopefully you'll get a deeper understanding. But essentially, since pretty much everything vibrates with harmonic tones, and each of these harmonic tones are integer multiples of the first harmonic, it makes sense that if you multiply all of the harmonic frequencies by the same number, it sounds the same, but it just sounds lower or higher. But what happens if you add a number to every harmonic frequency? Now, none of the harmonics are integer multiples of one another. And the result sounds weird. Really, really weird. Strangely electronic and eerie. So that's all we need to do with the ring shifter, is shift the signal by 30 hertz down. Make sure the dry-wet setting is set to 1, so we only get the shifted signal and not a combination of the original and the shifted signal. Everything else should be set to 0. And that's it. Though you might do a bit of EQ work to make it sound a little fuller. Play around with it. Make some different voices. Anyway, that's pretty much Zenyatta's voice effect. Okay, bye.